Visual Studio Code is a powerful text editor light IDE. And in this video, we're gonna talk about how you can set up VS Code for Golang development. We're gonna talk about installing necessary tools, the Go Please language server, debugging your Go code, and a lot more. I'm John, this is John Codes, and as always, links and timestamps for everything in the descriptions. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and without further ado, let's go. Now, first off, let's make sure we have the right tools installed. You'll obviously need VS Code, which again, is a lightweight IDE configurable text editor. And here we can install VS Code for whatever operating system we have. For my case, it is Mac. And when you first open up VS Code, you should see something like this. Now VS Code has become very popular and surprisingly, it's very powerful. It's fully customizable, has tons of plugins you can install and is really great for Go development. You'll also need to have Golang installed and set up. You can ensure that you have it installed by performing the command on your terminal, go version. You'll also need to have the go env set up properly with your go path and the go bin and all that. If you don't have go installed, there are a lot of methods for installing it. I'll link some of the methods in the description. And if you're on macOS, you can use brew, uh, other package managers like app get work fine. There's a number of different ways to get it. For this video, you'll need to have it installed, but we won't go over installing go. Now let's open up VS code. And over here we have the extensions manager. Go to the search bar and we can type in golang. And this first result here with about 4 million downloads is the extension that we want to install. So let's hit install. And that'll quickly install the Golang extension for us. Now this plugin works with both the Go path and Go modules. But currently as of Go 115, around the filming of this video, the recommended way to set up your Go project is with Go modules. And it is the general standard in the Go community for setting up your Go project. So now here I have a very simple Go module project. It prints hello world in the main program and then has an addition public function that adds two numbers. Now when I first open this project, the extension needs to install some additional command line tool for it to work in its fullest manner. You can either hit the install all notification here, or you can also hit command shift P to open the command palette and then type go install and you want this first one, go install update tools. And I recommend clicking this box here to install all the tools, hit okay. And a prompt will open where it'll install all the packages and all the tools necessary for the Go extension to work. If you ever have any problems with these extensions, usually the best thing to do is reinstall the extensions with that command palette command I just gave you. So now once all those tools have installed, you can see this message here, all tools successfully installed, you are ready to go. So let's get into a little bit more about the configuration of this extension. The preferred way to set this up is with the language server, especially if you're using GoMod. The GoPlease language server is preferred as it is a single running server on your machine that provides language features that would typically need to be accessed through several different command line tools. So in general, the language server is much faster, it offers more features, and it includes best in class GoMod support. At the time of this recording, the Go Please language server is currently in alpha state and not considered stable, but in my experience, it provides the best support and the best way to work with Go code and VS code. Now by default, the language server is off, but we can change that with some of our preferences. Again, let's access the command palette with command shift P and then type in preferences. And this first one, open settings JSON. And this will open your settings for the entire VS Code. Now, mainly what I'll be referencing here is the VS Code setup from the Golang Tools page. And this is an up-to-date documentation of how you should set up the GoPlease server with VS Code. And this snippet right here is just a fine snippet to get started with. And this is what I'll be referencing. The link for this is in the description. So now first what we want is the go use language server and we want to set that to true. Setting that to true will access the go language server on your machine. And this enables better completions and code sense within VS Code when working with Go. And we have the language server experimental features. I've set these all to true for formatting, diagnostics, and linking. I've set those all to true. Now you might get some errors like this from VS Code itself saying that this property doesn't exist or it doesn't work or the Go extension doesn't support this. 
Now the official documentation actually says that this will still work. You might see some problems, but at this point in the extensions lifecycle, that's just fine. And you can still use those features inside of your settings. Next, I have some more general Go settings, some code action on save. These are just things that I find useful where it won't format on save, uh, some other things that are just by your preference. Now finally, the Go Please section, which is the actual Go language server. We want complete unimported, and this will actually get us packages that we have referenced but that haven't been imported yet. And then deep completion, and this will enable us to access deeper parts of code that we're vendoring or using in our packages. So again, the link for this is in the description. This is probably the most useful document right here for configuring VS Code with the Go language server and for any other things that you need. So let's see this in action. We can do a lot of things like hover over to get some documentation. We can use F12 to actually go into definitions of functions. So if I hover over print line there and then F12, that'll actually take me into the actual definition for this function, print line. Get out of here. Now, if you're following along, again, the main function for this program just prints hello world. And then the package also has an exposed addition function that just adds two numbers together. And we have a test function here called test addition. And this actually checks that what is returned from the addition public function is true. So two plus two should equal four. If not, it fails. And one of the really cool things about this extension is that we can actually run the tests directly here from within the file in VS Code. So if I hit run tests, and we can see that it completed and it's okay. And we can actually see that fail. Let's just add an additional number here. Save that, go back over here, rerun the test. And it fails because it expected it to be four and I added an additional one in there. So super, super simple program, but this illustrates that we can actually access a lot of testing features right within VS Code. Now, again, the command palette that we can access by command shift P is super, super powerful. If you type go and then colon, we get access to all kinds of different features. You can go to the test file and that'll actually rerun the tests. You can restart the language server, toggle test coverage. It offers all kinds of different things here. Now, if you actually wanna build a binary and run your code, I think the best way still currently is probably with the command line. So here we're at the command line and we can do go build main.go. And that'll give us a binary here called main. And this is still probably the best and easiest way to build your binaries. Now let's talk about debugging, another really useful feature in VS Code. You'll need to have installed something called Delve. And on different platforms, there may be different security and permission considerations for installing Delve. So make sure to check the readme for Delve for further install instructions. Again, I'll link that in the description. But probably the easiest way to install Delve, again, let's go to the command palette, go install, update tools, and we can scroll down and right here is Delve. Now, if you had just clicked all of them before, Delve should have already been installed, but if not, you can click Delve, hit go, and the output should install the Delve Go tool for you. Now, once that's done installing, you can go to the debug panel here on the left. Debugging is one of the most powerful features as part of VS Code, but first let's head over to our main.go and let's actually put a breakpoint right here on this line in the main function. Let's go into the debug panel and we can see that breakpoint is here and hit run and debug. Now this dropdown will ask us if we wanna use Go or some of the more experimental features as part of Delve. The first one is just fine and it'll start running. And we can see that we hit that breakpoint right here and we can see any local global variables. We can even see the entire call stack. Setting breakpoints throughout your code is a really powerful way to step through and find bugs and debug things. And all you have to do is have Delve and set a breakpoint, hit run and go. This panel here will let us continue, step over, step into, step out of, replay or stop. And we can just stop this here. Now, if we go into our main test, why don't we put a breakpoint right here, hit run and debug, again go. And this hits that first breakpoint on that test. What the debug panel is doing is running the entire test file, all the tests. So if we had more tests in here, it would go through all those as well. And why don't we step into, which goes into the addition function. We can step into that. Let's say that we've gone as far as we wanted to go. We can just hit continue and we can see the output here, the failure. And again, I forgot to change that. Let's save that there. And let's hit debug test again. And we can see it's running. And let's just hit 
continue and it should go through all the tests and it passes. There we go. Now this that I'm accessing down here is the debug console. And this is next to where we can see problems or the terminal or additional output. This can be accessed easily down here on the bottom left where we see the stop sign and the warning sign. Now, if you want tighter configuration on running and debugging your Go code with this extension, you can create a launch JSON file. Click this here with Go and it fills in some basic configurations for us. We can add more configurations, but it gives us tighter control on how Go runs, how we run the debug program, and even some compile time flags if we needed that. Now, if you wanna set up a more full feature, full Go IDE experience, there's a lot of other extensions that go really nicely with Golang. We can look at those here. The Kubernetes extension is really powerful, enables you to even interact with your clusters right from VS Code. Similarly, the Docker extension is really powerful. You can build Docker images, make Docker files, and the YAML extension is really great. Enables syntax highlighting with YAML. I really like this one. I interact with Spotify directly from VS Code using this extension. And there's also lots of themes on VS Code. This is one of my favorites. It's very nice and dark, but kind of a smooth dark. And then I also prefer the IntelliJ IDE key bindings, but there's tons of different key binding extensions if you prefer one way or another. There's even a Vim extension where it turns VS Code into a more robust Vim-like experience. And finally, Git Lens is really powerful for using Git version control. It lets you see history and file changes, all kinds of great stuff. Well, that does it for this video. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you want to see next, and I will see you next time.